Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto and I'm a musician from Northport, New York. And today we're gonna to be talking about some of the things that I've learned in doing reaction videos and I've done quite a bit of them. So that being said, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I hope you guys learned something from this video. That's my goal. I really, you know, I'm not in it to, you know, just keep all the, the, the knowledge for myself. I want as many people to succeed as possible because I don't think that you succeeding takes away from you succeeding. I think that we could all succeed together. So let's get right into this. I have about 10 tips that I think could be really helpful on how I've learned to make money on reaction videos and what makes more money. And, and if you wanna make YouTube your full-time job, whether it be through reactions or not, part of what I do is reactions and that's how, what helps bring a lot of income in to support my music career. So I figured I'd share some of these thoughts and tips with you guys and help you guys learn something new today. So the most important thing, starting it off with number one, the most important thing that I completely regret not doing earlier. And it's actually only because of my subscribers that I ended up starting to do this and that's monetizing your videos. So to monetize your videos, just the first place, you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours in watch time. So it takes a bit to kind of get up to that, but once you start to get some videos that do decently well, it actually get, goes quicker than you think. More so the watch time than the subscribers. Subscribers can take forever. And like, you know, now where my channel is now, like I look back and it's like, okay, cool, we're like close to 100K subs now. But like, it took me years like years to get to even like a thousand or two thousand it took to, to get to get ten thousand subs took like like posting every day a long almost two years growth is slow right but um but then it finally starts to go up so sub count can take a while but don't stress about it and don't 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 cater to growing your sub count because the problem with catering to subs or numbers or even money to some degree is you start to do things that you might not necessarily agree with or want to do just to grow that number and it just leads to unhappiness so do what makes you happy and when you find that that balance of happiness and actually making the money or growing the channel that's that's where you really like really strive so first thing is to monetize the channel but it, and as a part of monetizing the channel that's disputing claims and one of the biggest regrets that i have is not disputing the claims off the bat, even before I was monetized, because I was doing reaction videos for a while, was under the threshold, and I, even once I passed the threshold, I didn't even start monetizing my videos, because I, I don't know, I didn't I didn't really wanna put ads on my channel, but then I realized that YouTube was already putting ads on my channel, and my subs convinced me to do it, so thank you guys for convincing me. I then had, I had so many reaction videos that I had to go and dispute, and I have a video already posted about how to dispute those, so you guys can go check that out. I'm also gonna be posting a refreshed version of like a more concise version of this so you, um, you can stay tuned for that and also check out the new one uh, or the older one so dispute them that is so important because even if it gets denied at least you tried right you'd actually be surprised especially if your channel is just growing how many get accepted the second thing to be conscious of and not cater towards but be conscious of is the demographic that's watching your videos typically i've found that the more seasoned, as you might say, the, the older demographic and the American, maybe Australian, UK demographic, those areas pay better. There's something called CPM, that's cost per milli, how much YouTube essentially pays you per thousand milli, per thousand views, like milliliter. The reason that the the, the older people <laughs> uh, pay more is because they actually have money that, that's able to spend. So marketers are willing to spend more on them seeing the ads because there's actually an ROI that they will receive because there's like a nine year old girl is not gonna have money to spend on a Coca-Cola bottle. So like there's no point in really those marketers don't spend a lot of money on them. So being conscious of who's watching your videos and where they're watching, because another thing, the next part that kind of goes into that is some of the um, smaller countries or countries that aren't those, those massive countries don't pay necessarily as well, but they might be super passionate about the artist. So the, the play is that, you know, they might give you a lot of views, but those views might not be worth a lot of money, but they're growing the channel. So it's, it's trade-offs. You just got to learn the flow and rhythm, but be conscious of the stuff you're doing. And, and I'm not saying cater to these things, like only do stuff that gets America's attention. Well, because like, it, it's slower to grow on America. There's a lot of other people in, in India and in, in the Philippines and, and in Indonesia. Like these people help grow your channel tremendously and they're, they're great people to have on your channel. They're super supportive. I love it. But talking actual money, those countries don't pay that well. I don't really know why. I haven't really figured it out yet. It's it's a trade-off. You get really great subscribers, but it doesn't pay as well. So you got to find that if it's your full-time job, you have to find the balance because otherwise you're not going to be able to pay your bills. <laughs> Here's a little tip that I found really really interesting live versions don't always get claimed so if you're doing songs like I, I do music right so this is mainly towards music stuff so if you do um if you do a, an album of song like a song off an album 
that is 100% immediately within like 30 seconds going to get claimed. Live versions don't necessarily always get claimed, and if they do, they're much more likely to get released than the actual version. Now, one thing to be conscious of is some of these big, 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 big artists, a lot of them are signed under the publisher UMG, which is Universal Music Group, and UMG always says, no matter what, says no. Like they will, they will deny your your dispute, which is so frustrating. So because some a lot of these big artists, for example, like Justin Bieber or Taylor Swift, or I think I want to say even like Ed Sheeran, Ariana Grande, like every, all these massive artists are all under the umbrella of UMG, and they all immediately get denied. Like I once, <laughs> I, I think I did Justin Bieber, Nick Jonas, and um, Demi Lovato albums all within like a week of each other, posted them all up. I did the whole albums of each of them, so it was like 30 songs. All of them, the same day, all came back denied. Like, like it, it was, it, it's so frustrating. So if anybody knows anybody that works at UMG and we could have a conversation, please, I would love to just, I would just love to know your thought process, please. <laughs> so that's something to be conscious of too. Know that those artists are probably gonna get denied. But now live versions don't always get denied. Now here's an even further tip, next tip on live versions. BBC Radio covers, covers actually are great because covers um, don't necessarily always get claimed because most of them are live. And second of all, when one artist is singing another artist's song, YouTube doesn't always like know where to delegate that, so it just kind of doesn't sometimes get a claim. Now, BBC Radio One does a lot of covers, like where these big named artists cover other big name artists. And first of all, the reason I like doing those is because first of all, the sound quality is phenomenal, and second of all, they're already big name artists, and third because their covers often they don't always get claimed. Now, if it does get claimed, sometimes it will be a uh, like a. Um, they call it like a songwriting claim where it's like you share it because they can tell it's a cover of a song. They think you're covering the song essentially, um, but it doesn't get claimed as the original. So it's a really cool little tip you can get. Here's another thing, that, another misconception that I learned. It's not necessarily about making money, but it's all about views which end up making money. Not all big named artists big bring big crowds. And I've been really surprised to see like, oh, this is like a number one artist. But like nobody's really searching for reaction videos for them. And I just found that very fascinating. So you really need to find a niche of, of artists that people are actually searching for. Uh, for example, like say like Lord, um, she's a great artist, but not a ton of people are searching for Lord reactions. Now the melodrama um, uh, album that did, like we're just getting in a tangent, but you know what I'm saying. Here's a super important thing that I learned. Retention is the most important thing on YouTube. How long you retain people on your videos is the most important metric because that means that you're keeping people on the app and you have a good quality video so YouTube wants to then share it with other people. So retention is first of all really important. Second of all, the longer you retain people, the more ads you can put in a video. In order for a video to be eligible for what we call mid-roll ads, which is ads that are like in the middle of set of the video. Like you've ever been watching a video and two minutes in, you get an ad, that's called a mid-roll video. And the only videos that are eligible for that are over eight minutes. So you have to be over the eight minute threshold to even be eligible for mid-roll ads. So sometimes longer form content works, but now it's a, it's a trade-off because you have to have, you can't just make a really long video and it'd be about nothing because the retention rate is gonna be terrible so it's not gonna be recommended. So you have to have good quality content if you have actual things to say and it can fit in eight minutes or, or longer even better because the longer the video and the longer the retention rate, the more ads you get put in, the higher you get paid out. Now another tip is over 10 minutes you can actually add post video ads, which is like after the video plays and ad rolls, which is a really cool thing as well. The last tip I have for making money on YouTube with the reaction videos is not my favorite option, but it is an option that I want to talk about. It is charging for reactions. Now there's actually two ways to go about this. There's like professional ways, for example, like if you actually have like a, a decent sized following, you start to grow your channel, these these people will re reach out to you and say, hey, how much would you charge for a reaction to their song? And like, that's a cool way to go about it, you know, especially if they're like developed artists um, and then that actually have like actual budget and money for it, then that's a, that's a legitimate way. And I actually have no problem with that. The one I do have more problem, not judging anybody that does, I just feel uncomfortable is like being like when a, like a, a, a subscriber is like, hey, I love Zane or I love Adele, you know, can you do this song? Technically, I, I could be like, well, yeah, I'll charge you 25 bucks or 100 bucks, whatever the case is for your request. But I don't love charging subscribers. It's just not something I, because now technically like, I don't know. I, I just don't like getting into that. I'd rather just do it for free if I can. But maybe, maybe to be honest, there's a lot of songs I can't get to because it's, it's not a priority because I get so many requests. 
and maybe I'd be better off charging them, you know, and, and, and then not doing anything at all. I don't know the answer to that. I'm actually just thinking about that right now. <laughs> it's all a balance. It's all the most important thing is to have fun because the more fun you have, the more you will actually create, the more you create, the more money you make. This is actually super, super important. If you made it to the end of this video, shout out to you because uh, I appreciate you. And we got mid roll ads in this. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> but not actually. <laughs> No, but something that's actually really, really important that I've learned is the more content you put out, the more money you make. There was a time where I literally put out like 350 videos in a month, and that was one of my highest performing months because there's so many videos that people can see. If you put out one video a day and you have 100 subscribers, not all 100 people are gonna be interested in that video. But if you put out 10 videos, you have a much better chance of first of all people staying on your content because there's more options. Because if you watch, if you I watched your one video and that's all that was available, but I had like 30 minutes to kill. Well, I'm moving to somebody else's content. But if I don't, ha if you have 10 videos for today and I have 30 minutes, well, I can be watch one, two, three, four, and I might not be interested in the other six, right? So you have a lot more options for your subscribers. And that, grow, first of all, grows your channel, but also keeps people on your channel watching more and more and more of your content. So you wanna provide as much as you're happily able to because you don't wanna be a grind, you don't wanna be miserable, but, but, but the more you put out, I've seen, I've tr I've tested it, I've also pulled back to see, you know, okay, maybe if I pull back, maybe it'll help the growth of the other videos. It didn't, I still got the same amount of views. So that's super important. Put out as much as you can and that will 100% make you more money. So this is post editing Jacob. I was editing the video and I realized that I forgot to mention something that I think is pretty important. Uh, another option that you have too is uh, sponsorships. So as your channel grows, you can either reach out to brands yourself or they can reach out to you and you find brands that work really well with you and your company or you and your, your, your channel. Uh, co you find companies that work well with your channel and you, you work out a relationship that you maybe you mention them in the middle of the video, maybe you mention them at the beginning of the video, maybe you you know you, you have it in description. I prefer doing actual, uh, this is just my preference, but I prefer doing upfront actual payments from them. Say, hey, I'll guarantee you this many views uh, for this certain amount of money. I personally don't like using affiliate like links because which affiliate links, which essentially, well, let me rephrase it, affiliate links only because they sometimes they'll be like, okay, we'll pay you up front, but we'll also give you a portion of the, the sign up money. Now that's, that's the win win. That's amazing. But now sometimes they'll be just like, Hey, we'll give you free products, but you have to, you know, you make 10% on the, 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 you make 10% on the sales or you make 30% on the sales, or sometimes we don't, they don't even give you free products and you just mention them in the, in the description or in, in your video and you get, you just make portion of it. And I personally don't like that because it's almost like I'm selling to the subscribers without getting anything in return get or guaranteed in return. I don't want to oversell to the subscribers. So that, that's a, I'm, I'm wary of those. Some people do really well with them. I have all affiliate links in my description actually. So that's another way too. You can sign up for the Amazon partnership and every single, you, there's a ton of them actually. I just personally did Amazon and you can link all the gear that you have in your studio to Amazon. And if anybody buys anything from your link not even just the product you have listed if they click your product for a, you know a coffee cup on amazon and they go and buy a 500 hundred dollar tv well you actually make a portion from from amazon so that's another option too that's actually that's a decent nice way to have some income man i'm thinking of so many ideas now we got so many more ideas another idea is merchandise now you can make some merchandise for your channel as your channel grows make some merchandise i'm wearing some right now this is the team tuto if you want to support the channel you can buy some merch now i am get i get wary about selling too much to the subscribers i want to provide value to them i don't want to have them there to make money from them uh, that's why I like doing like, you know, paid reactions from other people, like for example, like companies or sponsorships from companies where I'm essentially just saying, hey, if you're interested in mastering music or making uh, music or this or that, if you're interested in this, then go check out them rather than being like, hey, go buy my merch or hey, I'm going to charge you for a reaction video. And like, I don't love that. You know, it's more of they have to make a decision if it fits right for them, then they go and buy that thing from that company or things like, hey, you're already buying this anyway. You know, or you're already using Amazon. If you want to use my link, it means so much to me. You know, I might, I gotta start bringing that up more often in my in my content. But regardless, those are two ideas that I just thought of after the fact in post editing. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed that. That's definitely a lot of nuggets of wisdom in there. At least I think so. It's the stuff that I've been doing. And hey, it's my full time job. So if if you want it too, it's 100% possible. Wish you the best of luck. Let me know in the comments below what you learned. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Text me if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. God bless and peace out.